Okay, here's a quick programming overview on the Q173. It's pretty easy to program. Although there are a lot of complex options, it's, it's very easy to program each of the four outputs. Uh, basically what you do is you select the option here with the knob, and each knob position offers three options. And those three options, one, two, and three, are selected by the option switch, option one, two, and three here. So in a nutshell, what you do is you set this to what you want, and then you press a button to get to program that particular output to what you want. So if you want divide by two, you'll go here, and you'll select number two option, and you'll press your output. If you want to divide by four, you'll go here and press set to program your output. Now you've got to remember when you're programming your outputs, your input configuration uh, determines which configuration those sets of outputs are programmed to. Now in this case, I don't have an external source of gates, so the configuration section is being used as an internal oscillator, an internal clock, and so you're, you're set to a configuration of zero. If you get an external source, now the gates are coming from here, not the internal clock, and your configurations matter here. So if you're set to one here, when you program this one, it's configuration zero, and when you go up to one and you program it to that one, whatever it is, that's configuration one and two and so on. You have six total configurations that you can program. So it's important if you get lost to remember that when you don't have an internal, uh, an external source of clocks, then you're in configuration zero and this section is used as the, uh, the internal clock. Um, you have two switches here that allows you to control the outputs, and you'd have to use a scope really to completely understand, but I'll try to explain it to you. Let's say if you go to uh, divide by two, which is a pretty common thing, and you select option switch number two, you get divide by two, but these two switches control how the output operates, and you, in the first switch here in the middle, um, you have normal and then S for skip, and invert, which is exactly the opposite of normal. Um, in normal mode, you're just positive polarity. In invert mode, you're, in, you're the opposite of that. In the middle position, that means skip the first incoming pulse. And that has the effect of shifting the pattern down by one clock. And that essentially doubles the types of outputs you have. Uh, you can stagger gates into hocket patterns and all kinds of crazy things just by skipping, um, skipping the first gate pulse. So these, all of these switches matter when you press the set button. Uh, the final switch here is controls the width of the gate pulse. And up in the top position, gate, the output gate width is based on the incoming gate width. If you're using the internal oscillator, its width is set to 90%, just like a Q960 sequencer. Um, the middle position is B for binary. There wasn't enough room to write the word binary there. But that essentially makes the output 50% of the period. So it's a 50% duty cycle. And in trig mode, uh, that's a five millisecond pulse for the output. And you can see that here. I'm going to go to uh, divide by two. You can see it flashing ever so briefly there. That's a five millisecond pulse. In binary mode, it's basically on 50% of the time. In gate mode, it's close to that because it's a 90% 90, uh, 90 duty cycle. If we use an external clock here in gate mode, this will be equivalent to the input duty cycle. So you have complete control over that. It gives you a lot of options. Um, so that's basically how the programming works. You 
turn the knob to the function you want. You select one of the three options and then you set your outputs how you'd like them and then you press the button and it's there. When you power off, these programming uh, options are will be recalled. And remember that your configuration matters if you program at zero and then this gets moved to two, then you're going to have a completely different set of outputs here. So that's basically how the programming on the Q173 works.